<laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, that was fun. Um, welcome to the closing game. If this is your first time uh, at Embedded Linux Conference, you're probably thinking, what the heck? <laughs> but uh, I always, I try to mix it up and have conference closing games, uh, multiple games. This is the special Penguin edition uh, of, uh, of this uh, session, I guess. Uh, earlier this year, the reason I had all these pictures going and I dressed up like a penguin, I went to Antarctica and uh, it was super awesome. Uh, and so I thought um, it'd be fun to do something penguin related. Oh, see, I'm not even on the mic. Okay. Uh, I have to back up and say everything for the virtual people. <laughs> uh, uh, I went to Antarctica earlier this year and, uh, and uh, had an awesome time, got some selfies with some penguins. Uh, and I want it to go on record that I take my role as brand ambassador very seriously. Okay, uh, or if, if this were Sony logos, I'd probably get fired for doing something this silly. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so I had a very interesting time down there, and I'm going to kind of circle back to that at the end of the presentation and talk about uh, some stuff. But before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go through just a little bit of um, housekeeping. I want to say thanks to everyone who made this event possible. Uh, including the sponsors, and I'm going to go through the slides uh, pretty quickly here, but AWS, uh, Google, and IBM are our diamond sponsors, and we have these companies as our platinum sponsors, and our gold sponsors, and our silver sponsors, and we had a lot of them, and so uh, we really want to thank the sponsors. We wouldn't be able to do this, have a, have a nice venue like this. Yeah, thank you. And we also... We also want to thank the program committee, um, Frank Rowan, Jeff Ozier mixon Kate Stewart, oh, I misspelled your name, there you go, Yoshitaki Kobayashi, uh, Marta Ribsinska, Thomas Petazzoni, and myself uh, are on the program committee, and uh, so we thank them. Uh, of course, we thank our speakers. Uh, really, the event is about the speakers and the information that they share. Uh, we just kind of guide it as a program committee. And the attendees, of course, your being here and your participating helps make the conference uh, what it is as well. Uh, and then I cannot go without thanking the Linux Foundation event staff. Uh, they are the best in the business, literally. It has been, you guys have no idea what kind of year it's been. Well, I mean, you've all had your own COVID year, right? But uh, the event staff in particular has had challenges like you wouldn't believe. So I want to give them a round of applause. Okay, so, um, so speakers, if you have not already done so, you were supposed to have done this last week, but like if you have a boff or a keynote, uh, then your, ses your session slides might not be up on the website. Please get them up on the website. And, uh, you know, we will email you afterwards, but please don't make us do that. It's a lot of work. Um, and then the sessions were recorded, uh, and they're available for 30 days on the Excel platform and then they'll be migrated over to YouTube. So all of this great information will be available uh, in perpetuity, which is uh, one of the great reasons we have this. Uh, we will actually put links to all of the presentations and the slides on the eLinux wiki. So uh, I don't think this page exists yet, but it will shortly, uh, probably by uh, early next week. And uh, then uh, just a shout out. So Embedded Linux Conference Europe is going to be in Dublin in September. And we are actually in the process of reviewing the proposals for that now. So um, uh, very excited about that. Uh, I can already tell it's going to be an awesome event. We've got some great content uh, that I think is going to shake out there. This is our third try at Dublin. Uh, so maybe, the, maybe we'll work, make it work this time. Um, so we're going to play some games. Um, and there are two types of games, a game of skill and a game of luck. Uh, and uh, what happens is we're going to all, uh, we, we narrow the contestants down and then we give you some prizes. Um, and what will happen, oh, a token. Uh, the winners will be selected and will be given a token, uh, which we, you can come to claim a prize. Uh, let me see, did I have the, yeah. So the big overview of the game, if you haven't played this before, we call this a red-green game. 
Uh, everyone, this is a little bit of an athletic game uh, because you're up and down a lot. Uh, but uh, make sure you have two cards of different colors. If you don't have two cards, I see a lot of empty chairs, you can grab those. Um, at the beginning of each round or each period, we're going to have everybody stand up. You hold up a card or cards, uh, sometimes it's both cards, indicating your answer. If you get the answer wrong, uh, we request that you sit down. I, that means you've lost. Uh, and we, do, we will have some judges watching for that. So, uh, and, and then uh, eventually we'll narrow it down to like four or five people. Those people will win a prize. Uh, we used to have people come up right in the middle, uh, but that kind of takes a while. So we're just going to hand you a, a piece of paper with a number on it. So that will be your prize. So if you get a prize, don't just wander off. Don't forget, come up to the table afterwards because we need to get some information. Some of the things are like gift cards, and we'll actually deliver those electronically to you. So we need your email and, and that type of thing. Um, so we have LWN.net uh, gift certificates. Uh, we have gift cards for $50. We have a bunch of books that have been donated uh, on various embedded related topics, IoT. And we'd like to thank our sponsors for that. And we also have a couple of Austin party packs, right? So we've got uh, Frisbee and some cards that are specific to Austin. We've got some seasonings and a mug. And then we've got a, like a Star Wars Lego kit. So this is just our way of saying thank you for coming and thank you for uh, being an open source developer. Um, so our first game is going to be Embedded Linux History, Technical, Nerd, and Penguin Trivia. That's right. Hopefully you studied up on your penguin trivia. Uh, important disclaimer, this game is not fair. Uh, and you'll see, <laughs> you'll see, it's never fair. So if you, get, if you get eliminated, we apologize. It's a bummer. Um, virtual attendees, this is the first unfairness uh, raises its head. I'm sorry there are no prizes for virtual attendees. I just did not have time to spin the game up. And uh, so you can keep track at home, though, and please share your score. You can score yourself differently. Just give yourself one point for everything you, you got uh, right, or, you know, 100 points, whatever. Because um, you're not getting a prize, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, you can tell your score in the chat, et cetera. A uh, little frowny face. Sorry about that, virtual people. Uh, one of the other things that we found was really difficult was there's like a 20 second delay between the live and the virtual and it was really hard made made that hard so so everybody stand up and grab your grab your cards what penguin has a linux distribution named after it if you think it is gen 2 the gen 2 penguin hold up green if you think it's the chin strap penguin hold up red if you think it's the Emperor Penguin, uh, hold up red and green. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and hold up your cards. Um, so here's the deal. I, I'm gonna, most of the time what I'll do is I'll have you pause before you hold up your cards, because a lot of people like look around, <laughs> check out what's going on. Um, uh, <laughs> so uh, those of you who are holding red are pretty nervous right now, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> But it is Gen 2 is the correct answer. So if you're holding up red, please sit down. Uh, OK, let's move on to the next question. We'll go through these pretty quick. OK, so Samsung, these are all like super critical, deep technical knowledge questions, like this one. Uh, Samsung has created a remote that charges itself by harvesting energy from wireless signals or movement of the remote, red or green. OK. Good. The answer is wireless signals. <laughs> wow, that really took out a swath. <laughs> okay, what are we down to? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're down to seven. We're going to run one more. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so if you're still standing, you got another chance. Intel recently acquired which embedded Linux consulting company? Was it Witekio, Linitronics, or Consulco? If you're a Consulco... <laughs> Employee, you have a conflict of interest here. Uh, because you know the answer. Uh, well, you know, well, never mind. <laughs> OK, is it Witekio, Linutronics, or Consulco? OK, 
Uh, the actual correct answer is Linitronics. Okay, so we only eliminated one person that round, I think. Okay, we got we to go one more time. Okay. Okay, the Embedded Linux Conference, okay, this is for alumni, has not been held in which of the following California locations? Not been held in the Hotel Kabuki, the Computer History Museum, or the Tech Museum? Go ahead. Oh, we got a variety of answers there. And the answer is the Tech Museum. All right. Okay, so we're down to... Five people. Oh no, you're four people. Okay, you guys are winners. So our our uh, trusty assistants will give out. <laughs> oh, that's the Hill Hillman Air Museum. Yeah, that was in Redwood Shores. Anyway, okay. Um, okay, everybody, back up. And this one, if you watch your sci-fi movies, uh, admittedly, both of these are pretty old, but anyway. <laughs> Who said, I've got a bad feeling about this? Was it Neo from The Matrix or Han Solo from Star Wars? Everybody up? Okay. Not fooling a lot of people with this one. It's Han Solo. And actually, other characters started to say it because it was kind of a running gag in that series. Okay, if you missed that, sit down. Okay, the city of Austin, Texas is larger or smaller than New York City in square miles? Ooh, do you know your city geography? <laughs> I know. Okay, if you guessed larger, you're wrong, it's smaller. <laughs> Usually, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> I was counting on that one to trip you up. Um, it's only 274 for Austin and 3, 305 for New York. Okay, so people who are left standing. Students at Johns Hopkins University have created something to help with food handling. Is it an IoT wrapper that records location temperature and delivery time or an edible burrito tape? <laughs> okay, make your decision and go. Okay. Commit, commit. It's edible burrito tape. <laughs> okay, we've got two, two, uh, three winners. Three winners. <laughs> Have you ever had your burrito fall apart? This is awesome. Who says the world is not be get getting to be a better place? Uh, okay. With hot sauce. With hot sauce. Okay, oh. Uh, Okay, just a sec. Okay, we can give 10 more. Okay, sorry. I failed to give my assistant some instructions at the beginning, and that's my fault. Um, I want to make sure we have enough for both rounds. Okay, what is the latest? Oh, everybody up. You're back in. You have a chance to win one of these marvelous prizes. What is the latest C-spec that the Linux kernel is moving to at long last? Is it C11 or C17? Okay, the answer is C11. Okay, so Red, we didn't fool very many of you, but a few. Okay. What is occlusion grotesque? Occlusion Grotesque. This was announced this year. Is this a security vulnerability in the Chrome rendering stack or a font designed by a tree? <laughs> Peep, I know you're guessing on this one because I'm sure you haven't. But you know how my mind works. This is a font designed by a tree. <laughs> So th I thought this is super interesting. So why go to all the intellectual labor of designing a font when you can just carve it into a tree, come back five years later, and record it? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, let's see. OK, a huge security bug affecting thousands of servers was identified in December of last year. Was it shell shock, 
log for shell or heart bleed? Okay, answers? Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, the lone person who said heart bleed. <laughs> it is log for shell. Might be confusing because the name of the vulnerability is not the same. Everybody just calls it the log for jbug. Uh, but it affected my server in my basement. Man, uh, the audacity. Uh, it took a while to figure out. I was talking to Kate about we, if we had S bombs in my server, in my server, it would have been easy. Okay, what species has more biomass by weight on the planet Earth? Is it humans or krill? <laughs> Humans weigh a lot, krill weigh a little, but there's a lot of them. Okay. And this one is krill. Uh, I, did, I, I was wondering if I should stump you on this one, but I didn't, I guess. Yeah, you just know me. You just know I'm going to go with the weirdo. Um, okay. Research, <laughs> researchers recently demonstrated a quantum phenomenon that could lead to memory storage for quantum computers. Was it coherent magnons or time crystals? <laughs> I will tell you that a magnon is a real quasi-particle, but it was time crystals. <laughs> time crystals. Uh, whoever, uh, the physicist who came up with this, they, they only like theorized this like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, and then they discovered them, and now they have made it so that they can entangle two groups of time crystals. It's like, okay, quantum guys, uh, you are doing some crazy stuff. Um, okay, last, I think the last round, well, we'll see if this is the last round. Uh, there was a recent IEEE standard that was issued that required that if bugs were introduced, they must be clearly documented. <laughs> is that true or false? <laughs> oh. oh, this is interesting. It is true. <laughs> You must clearly document your bugs. Actually, this was, I, I, <laughs> this was an April Fool's RFC, but it was an RFC nonetheless. 92.25. Okay. Uh, what are we, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. We got eight? Seven? Okay. Let's go one more. This is the last one. Which operating system runs some of the science experiments on the James Webb Telescope? Is it Linux or VxWorks? Unless you're on, like, the James Webb development team, this one might be a pure guesser. Oh, that's... The answer is VxWorks. Okay. Linux. Okay. So, okay. So, you guys are winners. So, four. All right. So, let me just comment on this. So... The clue here is that the James Webb Telescope went into development over 10 years ago. So the fact that it was a huge boondoggle that cost over $10 billion, it was like kind of earlier than, than uh, Linux was ready for deep space, deep space missions. Okay. What? Well, that's true. <laughs> but it was out of tree. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more round of this before we go to our next game. Uh, everybody up? And I'm sorry, we're going we're gonna to roll through these uh, a little bit faster. Texas State Capitol Building in Austin is the largest state capitol in the United States. True or false? True. <laughs> Everything is bigger in Texas. <laughs> Except the Austin city limits. <laughs> okay. Linux was first called... Freaks or Linux's Unix? Okay. The answer here is Freaks. Uh, Linus later became a branding genius, but not when he was still in college. Uh, that would have been terrible. Can you imagine the embedded Freaks contest uh, <laughs> con conference? Okay. The name Emacs is derived from editor for Macintoshes. Thank <laughs> you.
That is false, and I don't think I fooled a single person with that. Uh, stands for editor for macros, actually. Okay, the Alamo, Texas, uh, located in Oxford, Texas, is famous in U.S. history despite being the site of a losing battle in 1827 because of the heroic stand of its defenders. Is that true or false? I think this is my last Austin question, uh, or rather, it's my last San Antonio question because the Alamo is in San Antonio, not Austin. <laughs> so, so if you said false, you're correct. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do one more. An instance of Linux is currently running on the planet Mars. Okay, I had a really hard time with this one because the Mars helicopter shuts down every night. <laughs> so technically, is it running right now? <laughs> uh, I decided to say yes, even because I searched and searched and I couldn't find out what the time zone was for where the, <laughs> where the helicopter was. So I couldn't tell if it was night or day. Um, okay. Linus Torvalds has actually been bitten by a penguin. <laughs> True or false? Okay, this is actually true. <laughs> okay, we're, we're at the last people, yeah, the last three standing here. Yeah, go ahead. All right, congratulations. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to switch to our second game. Uh, can you guys confer and tell me how many things we have left? reboots <laughs> every time every time we do a closing game oh my gosh okay okay uh, this is well I have a, I have a I was giving a closing game, and uh, it got really hot in my penguin suit. <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay, I need to, that was what I wanted to push. And I need to go down here. Here we go. Okay, sorry, I just had to... Microphone. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I had to have a move. Okay, so now it's time for game number two. So that was the skill portion of the game. Uh, and the next one we're going to play is Rock, Paper, Scissors uh, against this presentation. Only we're going to mix it up a little bit. We've, we've done this before, but this is a little bit different. It's uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Penguin, Krill. <laughs> So I want you to just look at the next screen and just memorize it real quick. It's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> these are the rules for rock, paper, scissors, penguin, krill. Uh, you can see some of the real rules. Um, uh, these are the rules in word form, but these are what you need to know, which are the hand gestures. Okay, so this is a penguin. This is krill. Okay, this is krill. Um, and I've, I've tried to make it easy. What I'm going to do is I'll show you what the presentation has, and then I'll show you what you, uh, is it who gets eliminated? No, who gets to stay in the game? So just pick a hand gesture. OK, remember, <laughs> this is rock, paper, scissors, penguin, krill. OK, so everybody stand up. 
Okay, so be thinking in your mind what you want to do. Every slide is preceded by a ready, set. I'll say ready, set, go. In this game, it doesn't matter that you're in unison, really, because uh, um, you can't, your neighbor is not necessarily going to have the right answer. But uh, <laughs> I did the synchronization better on this game than the other one. Um, go. So ready, set, go. Okay. The presenter is paper. If you are scissors or penguin, you get to stay in the game. <laughs> yeah, this game is fast. <laughs> this game is fast. Three, three fifths of you go out every round. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, throw. Paper. <laughs> so if you are scissors or penguin, stay in the game. Oh, we're down to four. Okay, what was our, what was our count? Oh, we had 10 left. Okay. There's five left. Oh, there's five left. Okay, sorry. Because there's five of you, we're going to do it one more time. <laughs> How are we doing on time, by the way? Oh, okay. Um, ready, set, go. It's rock from the presenter, so Krill, Steve, is the only one standing. <laughs> I know it. Steve has been coming to Embedded Linux Conference for uh, over 10 years. Like, uh, yeah, like, uh, so he knows what I'm thinking. He knows my tricks. Okay, everybody back up. The good news is you're back in the game. Okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, the answer this time was krill. So stay in if you're penguin or paper. Peng penguins eat krill and paper smothers krill. It's a tragedy. Um, okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, this one is scissors. <laughs> so stay in if you're krill or rock. Okay, let's go ahead. That's five of you? Okay. No, yeah, I got five. So five. You're winners. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. So how many do we have left? I have four. We're at six. Okay. Okay, everybody back up. <laughs> okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, it was paper. <laughs> it's the duplicates that throw people. Okay, ready, set, throw. Penguin. Ooh. Oh, we got, that was a good round. You guys, I really hung in there. If, if it's the same, you're out. If it's the same, you're out. Okay, ready, set, throw. Okay. Scissors. Oh, wow, okay. We're down to one person. Yay! <laughs> Okay, I think this will be our last round. Uh, I would appreciate it. Uh, I think we're at five? Four. four. Okay. If four of you could stay in. <laughs> that would. Okay. Okay. So, everybody up. Sorry for all the aerob uh, aerobic exercises. Um, ready, set, throw. Okay. Interesting. It's krill. So if you're paper or penguin, you get to stay in the game. All right. Ready, set, throw. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, see, I told you, I asked you specifically to stay in the game. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give the, the three, the three uh, prizes left. Okay. And I think we're going to call it there. And then, oh, he's already got one. It's only two. Okay, 
Okay, I can't give them away. Well, okay, so because of COVID, this is your best probability year ever on this game. <laughs> Usually we have 400 people in here. It's like, okay. Okay, let's do it one more round. One more round. Okay, ready, set, throw. Penguin. <laughs> okay, ready, set, throw. Rock. Oh, okay. Okay, we're down to we're down to what? Oh, two. We've got two. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now just ignore the next couple slides. Oops. Okay. Okay. Now it's just time for some closing remarks. Thank you guys. Um so uh I went to Antarctica and uh I had a good experience. I want to talk about something I did on that trip. So it was, it was a tourist trip. It was something that I've wanted to do. I read, I read the book about Shackleton. If you have not read that book, it's called Endurance. It's just amazing. The, the polar explorers at the uh, early, uh, early years of the 20th century, the stuff they did is just absolutely incredible. Um, and uh, so I went down there with my wife and did some tourist things. We got to go on land and, and see penguins and seals and glaciers. It was really awesome. One of the highlights of my trip was they had something called the science boat. Um, and so we would get off the main ship and get on this little Zodiac and we'd, we'd drive out into a fjord and uh, take some scientific measurements. So there are some PhD students that are... Um, that are doing research on the food chain down in Antarctica, and the and uh, and so uh, they they can't they can't go down there and spend you know like the whole entire summer doing it. So they have this agreement with the tour companies that the the tourists from the ships actually go out and do some of the data collection for them. So it's it's a really awesome thing. Um, it, I felt like it, it was fun to do. I felt it was like my small contribution to earth science. Um, and the device I used was this temperature and salinity. There were a couple of different experiments. This was the one that I got, was to drop this thing over the side of the boat, pull it back up, and it would measure, uh, measure some data. And they would compare that with uh, different seasons and different times of the year. And uh, again, just uh, it was a relatively small contribution, right? It took like maybe two hours to do. Um, but I thought it was really interesting. In our modern society, uh, we have opportunities to do little things that help, uh, help improve the world around us. And so I just want to kind of leave that as a thought. Uh, never in the history of mankind has there been the, the level of ease, the level of, um, uh, yeah, just ease of, of doing something small. You get on, like, Wikipedia. I've made, like, I'm not a Wikipedia, like, Good superstar. I've done maybe a hundred edits, but every little edit improves something a little bit. The same thing with this project, right? I wasn't, I didn't camp out in Antarctica all summer long, uh, you know, taking measurements. Uh, but, but by the accumulation of all of the uh, small acts of a large number of people, we can have, we can make the world a better place. And I would say, do the same thing for open source. Right, so you have, you are all open source developers. Uh, we're grateful to have you in the community. Find something uh, where you can contribute. And I know a lot of you are strong contributors already. Even if, uh, you know, the, it's very common to want to go off and do something really major, you know, like I want to rewrite the scheduler in the, in the Linux kernel. Uh, but that's probably too big of a task uh, for, for anyone. Uh, these days, but there are all kinds of projects. I was reading the K Summit Discuss list just this morning, and someone talked about wanting to uh, rewrite uh, the tool that does the kernel doc parsing. Um, and so you just have to know a little bit of Python and get in there, and and you can make a difference in the world. Um, and so I just commend you to do that. Um, I'm grateful that you've come. Uh, go out and make the world a better place, even as if it's just incrementally find something small to do um, and contribute something to open source. Open source is uh, really rewarding, uh, knowing that you're assisting people that you'll never, you'll never meet, you'll never talk to, uh, but you'll make a difference in the world. Uh, the future is bright. 
I know we're coming out of kind of a gloomy time with COVID, uh, but I think we have a, a great opportunity. In my status talk at the beginning of the conference, I talked about how, sure, we, there were some things we didn't accomplish uh, in terms of improving Linux, but Linux is used uh, in all kinds of places, billions of devices, there are tools available, there's resources, and we can uh, make the world a better place uh, through our, our activities. So thank you for joining ELC this year. I hope you learned something new in the sessions that you attended, and I hope to see you all again either next year or later this year in Europe. So thank you very much. If you want a prize, if you have a little ticket, please come up to the desk and we will sort it all out.